Before we can create a new layer and become organized with our workflow, we should import some media inside of our document to use. Go up to the file menu and left click, hover over import, and then hover over and left click on import the library. Your browser window will pop up and you can easily select files, whether it be a single file or multiple files. You can select several files in a row by left clicking on the first one and then holding down your shift key and left clicking on the one that you want to end on and also have all the ones in between selected. Or if you want specific ones that are spaced out, you can left click on your first photo, then hold down the command key and left click on your second photo. Now that I have both of my photos selected, I will click open. You'll notice that in my library tab, both of my photos appear. So now that I have my media in place, I can worry about the timeline. Now before we create a new layer, notice how my folder is highlighted in yellow? That means that currently this is selected and I want to make sure it's deselected before I create a new layer. In order to deselect a folder, you need to make sure that it's closed by clicking on the arrow to the side of it and then just left click in the gray area below. So now when I click on new layer, I'll have a new layer that's right above main content. I will double click on this layer and rename it to the according layer that I'm going to create. I will then create a new folder as well to put this new layer in for organization reasons. So all I gotta do is left click and drag up and now it's a part of that folder. So this is where things become confusing for the first time keyframe users. We need to make sure that for every page that relates to our new layer that we create a keyframe and erase the prior content. In order to do so, I will for the purpose of being able to see my keyframes and timeline easier, will move to frame 5 of the layer that I created. I will then right click and I will select insert keyframe. I will repeat this step also on frame 6 because I'm going to have two different photos show up on two different pages. When I insert the keyframes on the game design layer, you will notice that they are not a small black circle, but a blank circle. As we learned in the last lesson, that means I have a keyframe with no content inside that frame on that specific layer. However, you will notice that my graphics and text layers are still in view, and that's because they are taking the prior keyframes on their layers specifically to reproduce the content all the way down the timeline. So in order to successfully remove the graphics from what will become our game design page, we will have to also make keyframes on frame 5 and 6 on the graphics page. So I'll end up left clicking on frame 5 of the graphics, and then I will right click and insert keyframe, and I will repeat this process for frame 6 on the graphics layer. Now what you can do is with each keyframe selected, if you hit the delete key on your keyboard, it will remove everything from that layer on that specific frame. Now, if you go backwards, you can see that frame one through four are all the same, but five and six have become just the text. So now it's time for me to add content to my game design layer. So on frame five of my game design, I'll left click and select it. And then I will go over to my library and I will left click and drag the content out and let go. You'll notice that my image is quite big and I need to resize it. So I will go over to my tools and left click on the free transform tool. That will end up giving me handles all around my image. I can now left click and drag to scale and skew. And while doing so, I can hold the shift key to make sure that it stays proportional. Then if I let go of my shift key and my left click and drag, and if I go in the center, you'll see that I have a black cross that shows, which means I can move the photo where I'd like. So now that we have our photo in here, we also want to make sure that we have text down here to tell the audience what the name of the photo is. Just like we did with the graphics layer, we will need to go down to our text layer on frame 5 and insert a keyframe, and also on frame 6. After you do that, 
go back to frame 5 on the text layer select your type tool left click once and left click and drag and then give it its name then you can go back to your selection tool and you can move this specifically where you want to now we're going to repeat the same process for frame 6 so quickly going over it I'll click on frame 6 in my game design left click and drag my image out go to my free transform tool hold down the shift key left click and drag to keep it proportional I will then go back to my selection tool make sure that it's placed where I want it then I can left click on my frame 6 text go to my type tool left click once left click and drag the second time and give the name of the image and then go back to my selection tool and left click and drag after doing so you will notice that if you left click and drag your playhead to frame 1 that if you go from frame 1 to 2 to 3 and to 4 they all stay the same but when you get to 5 and when you get to 6 they are completely different so you would want to continue this pattern for the rest of the pages for layout purposes creating new layers that define what page of the app you will be on followed by creating folders just for organization reasons then if you like the format I chose below for the timeline you can space out your keyframes like so without having any problems when we start to code again formatting your timeline in this fashion where you have some breaks from your specific pages makes it easier for yourself and developers to see what you created. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to debug, how to add code snippets, and other fundamentals for making your overall project work accordingly.